Salve te omnes. Welcome to this uh, video lesson on chapter 33. We're in the middle of the third and final section of this, um, and we're starting at line 152. Ego cum ceteris, I, along with the others, hoc victoria gloriosa gaudeo, am happy uh, because of this glorious victory, quidim, at least, said multo magis gauderim, but I would be much more happy si amicus meus publius valerius quocum primum stipendium merui in columis esit et mecum gaudere posset. I would be much more happier if my friend Publius Valerius, with whom I uh, have earned my first um, sort of service here, stipendium, it refers in a way to your duty that you do and also the pay that you get for it, uh, with whom I've, I've served my first stint, paid stint in the army, were safe in Columbus, unharmed, and were able to be happy to rejoice with me. Okay, so what does this mean? His buddy Publius Valerius, whom you might remember from earlier, was sent with him uh, by Aemilius' dad to serve in the army. He apparently is no longer with us. Quicum mihi in hostes progresso auxilium fere velit. Who, when, he wanted to bring help, fere auxilium, to me, having advanced into the enemy. So the mihi is dative and progresso agrees with that. So this guy, when he wanted to bring help to me, and of course that's Aemilius, having advanced into the enemy, ipse ex acie ex curins, he himself running out of the battle line, pilo percusus cecidit, stricken by a spear, a javelin. Remember, pilum is a throwing javelin. Cecidit, fell. Cacidit, that's that odd perfect from Cato Cotere. Uh, Grauiter vulneratus in castra portatus est. Gravely wounded, he was carried, portatus est, into the camp. Ubi in manibus meis ex vulnere mortuus est. Where he died, mortuus est, from the wound, ex vulnere, in my hands. Very touching picture that Aemilius is painting here. Posquam me oravit, after he asked me, ut per literas parentes suos de morte filii consolarer, that I console, consolarer, his parents uh, in a letter or through a letter about the death of their son. Sed quo modo alios consolarer, but how may I console others? Cum ipse me consolare non possim, when I myself am not able to console me. Fateor me lacrimas effundice, effundice cum oculos eius clausissem, I confess, fateor, uh, that's a synonym of the compound verb confitior, where we get confessed from, I confess, I admit, that I poured out Efudise, perfect infinitive, that I poured out tears when I had closed his eyes. Here's another of these new pluperfect subjunctives. Said Eli lacrimae, but those tears, et militim et amicum decebant, befitted or were fitting for a soldier and a friend. So Romans, in such a con context as this, he's saying, you know, this is a decent and honorable thing to do. It's not bad to cry. I mean, Romans are supposed to be tough, Roman guys especially, but it's not bad to cry if you're a soldier and a friend who has lost your buddy at arms, right? Et enim malus amicus fuissim, and indeed I would have been a bad friend. Here's another plea perfect subjunctive, fuissim, I would have been. Nisi lacrimas effudissem, Unless I had poured out tears, or if I hadn't poured out tears, super corpus amici mortui, 
on top of the body of my dead friend. Okay, so it would have been inappropriate if he didn't cry, he's saying. Cum ille sanguinem suum pro me effudisset. When or since he, that one, and this is Valerius here, had poured out his own blood for me. So we're making a little bit of a word play on the effudisem, lacrimas, have poured out tears, versus effudisset, had poured out, and then the sanguinem blood. Okay, so if he poured out blood for me, then I got to pour out tears for him. It's a little bit of a rhetorical ploy there. Utenem, utenam, rather. Utenam introduces a uh, wish, and here we have the pluperfect subjunctive, so it's a contrary to fact wish. I wish that I had listened to my father. Cum ad studium literarum hortaretur when he was encouraging me to the study of letters, or of literature, we could say. Sed tum literas et studiosus literarum despiciebam. But then, at that time, I despised both letters, literature, and people that were studiosus of literature. So that is to say, people that were interested in or eager for literature, I despised them. Poetas ut homines otiosus oderam. I hated poets as sort of leisurely people, people that just laze around all the time, right? Uh, remember the contrast between otium, which is free time, uh, relaxation, and negotium, which is business and hard work, right? I hated poets like leisurely men, people that just lazed around. Precipue tabulum, especially tabulus. And this is a particular poet, the Roman poet Tibullus. Qui vitam rusticam atque otiosam laudabat, who praised the rural life, the country life, and the, the relaxed life, right? Vitam militarem despiciebat. And he despised the military life. Mirabor cur ille poeta. I wondered why that poet, mortem gloriosum pa pro patria diram ocaret, called a glorious death for your, your homeland, your country, dreadful. Why did he call it diram, right? Et anses quibus patria defenditor horrendos, and he called the blades Incis is a fancy poetic word for swords. The blades with which the country is defended, horrible, horrific. Ut in his versibus, as in these verses, quos senex magister etiam etiam, um, sorry, etiam atque etiam nobe sacitabat. Uh, these verses, which our old school teacher, my old school teacher, uh, again and again, we might say for this, even now and now, so that's to say again and again, read out loud to us. And so here he's going to quote Tobolus, and again, when he was a young man, he always thought Tobolus was crazy, and now he's recognizing the sense in what this Roman poet said. And by the way, Tobolus was a Roman poet, he was a love poet, but he also did serve in the military, according to his poems, and he had problems with that. He didn't want to go to war. He was more of a peaceful person, and if it, he had it his way, he would have been, you know, uh, a pacifist at home and not serving in, in, the, in the army. All right, so here are the lines of Tobolus, and this is coming from Tobolus, book one, poem 10, lines one through four. Quis fuit Horrendos primus qui pro tulit enses. Who was it who first, so qui primus, those are kind of the opposite of the normal word order, who first brought forth, pro tulit, horrific blades. Quam ferus et vere ferus ille fuit. How wild, okay, and truly iron that guy was. Now, ferus means wild in the sense of a wild animal, like feral in English, and ferus means made of iron, as in the English adjective ferus. So, he's making a play on words here, ferus et were ferus, right? So, the sound play and kind of a pun here. In English, I guess we could say how feral and how truly ferrous that guy was, right? To sort of get that uh, across, although those words are a little bit fancier in English than ferrous and ferrous are in Latin. 
Okay, so who invented swords, right? <laughs> that guy was an awful guy. Tum caides hominum uh, generi, tum proelia nata. Then the slaughter of people. Um, uh, then slaughter rather to the race or for the race of people. Let's do it that way. Generi is a dative. Then slaughter for the race of people. Then battles. Nata, and we have to understand like sunt, were born. So then slaughter was born for the race of people, then battles were born again for the race of people. So in other words, whoever invented swords, whoever first did that, he invented slaughter of people and battles and all this badness. Tum brevior dira mortis aperta via est, or aperta viast, uh, as they would pronounce it. Then a shorter way was opened we would probably say for but it's literally genitive for dreadful death uh, so then a shorter way we could also say then a shorter way of dreadful death was opened up okay so the point of tobolus's lines is i can't believe i mean this whoever it was that invented swords brought them forth for the first time he was an awful guy he was he was wild and truly like he was made of iron himself, so hard-hearted he was, right? Because he brought about slaughters and battles and dreadful ways of quick death and all of this that we don't want, right? All right. Ridiculi mihi porro videbant ii versus. Ridiculous, those verses seemed to me as a boy. Cum nondum caidem widisem, when I hadn't yet seen slaughter. At Hodie, but today, tibulum verum dixiste intelligo. I understand that Tibullus spoke the truth. Si yam tum hoc intellectissim. If now, at that, at this point, I have understood this, certe patrim. I'm sorry, I would have understood this, right? This is a pluperfect subjunctive again. Let's get that right for the tense. If uh, now, at that point, I had understood this. There we go. All right. Certainly, I would have listened to my father. Okay, so he's talking about contrary to fact in the past. If now, right then, uh, at, I had understood this, then I certainly would have listened to my father. Nick ad bellum profectus asem, nor would I have set out for war. Ut tot caides et tot vulnera viderem. In order that, okay, and this is, um, I would say, a purpose clause, in order that I might see so many slaughters and so many wounds. Or you could also just take it as a result clause um, with a result that I saw so many slaughters and so many wounds. At yam satis de caides scripsi, but now I have written enough satis about slaughter. No lo te fatigare narando de bello cruento. I don't want to tire you to wear you out. Remember, we get fatigue from this by telling about bloody war. Uh, the adjective cruentus, remember, comes from cruor, which is about gore or blood, like congealed blood, nasty blood. Not nice. Blood inside you, sanguis. Okay, I don't want to tire you by telling about bloody war. Cum brevi pacem fore speremus. When we expect or we hope that there will be, fore is short for futura messe, a peace in a short time. Brevi. Nisi ea space me fallit, unless that hope fails me, that is to say, unless I'm wrong about there being a peace coming. Post hoc plures epistolas a me expectato. After this, expect, and expectato is what we call a future imperative. You Don't worry about that. Essentially, it, it sounds a little more archaic or maybe uh, legalistic or something. Uh, expect, after this, more letters from me. Asque plures etiam ipsa scribito. And you yourself write, and notice scribito is also one of these um, future imperatives. If you look in the margin, you see it just 
uh, tells you that it equals a normal imperative. Uh, again, it has a little bit of an archaic flavor to it, or maybe a legalistic flavor. It was used in a lot of Roman laws, but also in older uh, examples of Latin. And write more letters also yourself, he says to her. Etiam aleos monito. Also advise others, here's another feature imperative, that they give letters to me. Et de re publica, et de re privata, nara tote mihi. And tell me both about the republic, okay, public matter, and about private stuff, okay. So, res publica um, is sometimes translated as republic or government, but the public stuff would refer to politics, and res privata, private stuff, that's just, you know, stuff about her family. Scitote me, know that I, omnia quae apud vos fiunt, cognoscere vele. Know that I want, vele, to know, to learn, all the things, omnia, which are happening with you or near you. Vale tutnum tuam cura diligenter. Diligently, carefully, take care of your health. Okay? Remember that they're living in a world where people got sick and died generally a lot earlier than for us. So it's very important to take care of your health here. And often Roman letters will close with some kind of statement like that. Datem pridie idus maias ex castris. Now this is kind of like the postscript for a Latin letter, and literally it's, it has been given, so we're sort of understanding an est here, it has been given the day before the Ides of May. In March, July, October, May, the knowns fell on the seventh day. So May is one of the special months that has the Ides on the 15th and the knowns on the um seventh, right? So the day before the Ides of May, if the Ides of May are the 15th of May, that means this is on the 14th of May. Um, yes, here it says, Dies. Dun, dun, dun. It tells us that the Ides of May is the 15th day of the month of May, right, in the margin there. Okay, so given on the day before the Ides of May, in other words, on May 14th, from the camp. Now, why does it say given? Well, it was given to the messenger, right? Um, and so he's just saying what day this was sent so that she knows if she get, receives it 10 days, 20 days later, however much later, um, that she'll know how long it's been. All right. Walete omnes. Hope you learned a few things in this lesson.